future. So there seem to be two major storylines that humanity seems to be completely going apeshit over about the future. One is automation, technological automation, and wealth inequality. Who owns the robot? In fact, this concern is becoming so large that uh, yesterday, actually, Barack Obama was interviewed by Wired, and he was talking about how we may actually need a basic income, and we need to be talking about how we restructure society in the next 10 to 20 years. I'm sure you've heard all those articles saying that within about 10 years, roughly half of the world's jobs will be automated by AI and robotics and just technology in general. And really, automation should be awesome news for the world because it frees up humans to go explore what they want to do, to explore art and create, be creative and basically leave all the menial tasks to the robot. But the problem is our global society and our kind of capitalistic economy is structured in such a way where automation really only just like further concentrates the wealth in the hands of a few. And automation and, and kind of wealth inequality are doubly linked because when you lose your job, you know, that value is still there. It's just being captured by a robot and by automation, but that value then goes to its owners. If our economy was structured in such a way where it actually worked with automation, that'd be an awesome thing. Every time a job or a task is automated, that wealth, that value would get shared among everyone and all the boats would ride. Okay, so how do we solve this? I think there's kind of like three aspects. There's what the government would do, there's what the uh, rich owners would do, and there's what the people can do in a decentralized way. So most governments globally tend to believe that if you tax uh, companies less, then they'll basically have more money to hire new people. So by doing that, you somehow increase jobs in the economy. As these companies and individuals automate more and more of the value they, they create in society and basically aggregate and consolidate that wealth, then there's going to be less jobs in the economy, which puts more pressure on the wealth. Eventually, the unemployment problem due to technological automation will get so vast that the governments will actually not be able to afford their welfare budgets, and so they will have to tax these companies at a high rate. And it'll make sense for governments to basically then start using those extra funds they've got to pay a basic income um, because it's just cheaper than running a manual kind of means-tested welfare system. Which is cool, well, everyone would have a universal basic income, it'd be like bare minimum, say maybe like 10, 20, 30 grand. Um, but the problem is you've still got this massive consolidation of wealth and power at the top. We'll all have a universal basic income, but the power structure of society will go the massive like automated companies at the top that are worth trillions of dollars, then government, then the people. And that might be great for a few years. I mean, we could probably live in a society where we're free to basically do whatever we want, but we all have to buy, you know, E-Corp, Evil Corp's products. But a society like that is not resilient. In fact, a societal structure like that is so hierarchical and so centralized that I think it's inevitably going to collapse, much like the Roman Empire, much like all the civilizations in history. Okay, number two, could there be uh, one of these owners of these massive multi-trillion dollar automated companies, could they actually be philanthropic enough to actually change the system and give back power back to the people? So while there are a lot of billionaires right now who have committed to giving away 99% of their wealth, I still think like the level of these companies you're talking about, the power will be so immense, they won't want to give it up. I mean, we're seeing the consolidation of these companies now, like, you know, billion dollar companies buy up other billion dollar companies and they all consolidate into single monopolies. Imagine that at a massive scale, imagine 50 years from now. Just like the dystopia presented in the uh, Mr. Robot TV series, um, these companies will be so vast that it's just, it'll be impossible to shut them down. Imagine one company owning all the robots, all the automation, all the systems. One scenario I could see playing out is actually these banks and these corporations doling out a basic income on their own. And the World Bank's actually already suggested doing this. And they don't want to give a basic income out purely for the social benefits and the freedom it gives people. No, they want to give it out because it will increase spending and it keeps the economy growing because you need money to spend to buy stuff. So I think those two scenarios are pretty bleak. Okay, the third one is basically decentralizing it all. Um, kind of like giving ownership of all these automations, all these robots, all these factories to the people, to the commons. And the blockchain can facilitate this, so you can actually have like global cooperatives. Imagine like trillion dollar cooperatives that are not owned by anyone. They have no control. They're completely run by people. So it's not hard to imagine like 100% automated, Turing complete robotic factories where there's no humans in there. Humans just maintain it when it needs maintaining. And these factories kick out whatever you want and they're owned by everyone on the planet. Now, I don't think we can start there because um, basically <laughs> having ownerless robotic factories is quite a difficult task because these things are quite capital intensive at the moment. They take a huge amount of investment to set up and also they're not Turing complete. You can't just quickly change them to make a different product. They're very much uh, built to make one specific product. So unless you can convince the masses to crowdfund tens of millions of dollars to build a robotic factory that just kicks out toilet paper, yeah, you, it's going to be a very difficult thing to attack first. But where I think we can move first is automating and owning the AI, the anything that's information-based, anything that's service-based, just owning all of those processes, all, owning all of that AI. So right now the world GDP is roughly around $100 trillion um, and something like 70% of the world is employed in the services sector. Um, that includes like all services. Uh, I think professional services are roughly 2%. So we just look at the professional services industry, things like lawyers, um, accountants, uh, financial analysts and stuff like that. Those are being automated. They're probably like on the, the lower rung, the lowest hanging fruit to be automated. But right now the people that are automating those tasks are these startups and entrepreneurs who create a company, automate it, and then they get bought out by the bigger companies. So then the bigger companies still end up owning the automation, the AI. 
However, the cool thing about software and artificial intelligence and making machine learning algorithms and neural nets is that it's a fairly low intensive capital exercise. It doesn't require much investment. So what we can do is actually incentivize these uh, developers out there to have a profit motive to build these automated systems, but when they build it and deploy it, it actually benefits the entire commons. And so this is one of the factors, one of the strategies I want to build in my peer-to-peer -peer economy is a, an incentive, a mechanism where you can automate these processes, deploy them once, and it benefits you and everyone. So for example, you, you as a developer can actually profit off building a bot. So you can build a, a small little automated bot that solves a very particular, say, accounting issue. You then deploy it to this new economy. Now, you as a developer, you don't own the bot, you manage it. The bot is owned by everyone. As soon as you deploy it, it's owned by the commons. Everyone has an equal ownership in that bot. And then any time a problem comes into the economy, not into the platform, not into the business, not into the startup, into that entire economy, it then goes directly to that bot and gives that bot a chance to solve it in an automated way. The bot successfully solves the problem, basically does that task, then the developer gets whatever percentage uh, profit of, or revenue from that, and the rest goes to the commons. And so you can see, like, if you scale that up to basically solving every type of information-based task, every type of information-based service on the planet, then you're capturing all that value and giving it back to the commons. And with a system like this, you're actually encouraging automation because it, it benefits everyone. It benefits the individual who makes the bot and it benefits the social commons. And so it's not this scary thing where it, it puts wealth in the hands of a few. And when you scale that up massively, what you're doing is you're capturing a huge amount of wealth, like trillions of dollars. You're pooling that for the social commons, which you can then use to pay for a decentralized basic income and infrastructure. We end up in a world where people have the freedom to have basically explore what they want to do and play and be creative because they'll have multiple skill sets and they encourage automation. If one of your skill sets get automated, who cares? You have others to fall back on. So what do you think of that future vision? How can you make it better? Snap your thoughts, I future. Um, I think it's an awesome system. I think it's a brand new economy. It's a brand new way of living. It kind of works with automation, but it gives power back to the people.